Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video we're going to continue working on this uh, website project here. Used it as a final exam in one class, and it's going to be a, re a review uh, activity in another class. So, let's see, we've got the structure set up. I've got a header, a left column, and a right column. And I've got the elements that go into the header section, the four key items, this logo, search form, secondary navigation, and little HTML5 badge. I haven't started doing any styles yet, so my page is really not that exciting to look at. In fact, here it is right now. See, it looks pretty sloppy. But we're not going to be too concerned about this, because as you make web pages, you get more and more confident. You know what's going on. So we're going to feel OK about this, because here's my web page as it's been written so far. I've got my container which contains the entire website. I've got my header section that contains my logo, my search form, my links, and my HTML5 badge. And those are all inside of my header div. Now I'm going to start to put some other things in my web page before I even do the CSS. Um, probably not a bad idea to start working on the CSS, especially for layout to make, your, make sure you're feeling good about that. But I'm feeling good about this because we haven't done any really complicated HTML. Nothing that we haven't done, you know, dozens of times before. So, I'm going to move over to my left column, and I see on my finished example, my left column contains a number of things. This is actually a table. It's kind of hard to tell because there's no borders on there. But there's a little table. There's a more complicated form. And then there is a uh, advertisement, a generic advertisement. So, I want to go and work on that. Jump over to my editor. I'm going to be working in my left column area. There we go. And let's see, first thing in my left column, I'm going to go ahead and create this table. There's a little h2, and I'll call it uh, box office, opening table tag, closing table tag. And each row, keep it as simple as possible. There's a cell that contains the information about, you know, this was the movie first or second in the box office. There's the title of the movie, and we can actually put in real titles here. Where I think I. I just took titles off of what was going on at the time I made the test. So I had several movie titles and several amounts. Okay, And what the hell, I'll just go ahead and put in movie title 1, make it really generic. And then the third cell in the row had those results, you know, so let's see, dollar sign, I'll do a 40 million or 40.5 million, 40.4 I guess, and a closing row. So that's the basic structure of my row. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that out. So I have several more, two, three, four, and five, movie title, oops, movie title, two, three, four, and five, let's put in some different amounts, 30 million, 20 million, point nine, 15.4, and uh, 9.4. So now I've got that, there's my basic table five rows, three cells in each row. Now, I also had a more complicated form in this left column. So I see the form has a selection menu with some choices, and I didn't care what the choices were, just as long as there were several things. And I've got another selection menu with some choices, and then a regular text box and a submit button, even though the submit button says go. All right, so I'm going to repeat this here. Let's see, another H2, and this is going to be my uh, movie show times. And I'm going to create a form. By the way, since these are dummy forms, um, technically I can leave out that method and the action attributes and things like that. Those aren't going to function, but we'll do more stuff with that in the JavaScript course. And let's see, I'll just, so I don't forget later, I'll go and put in my closing form. So I've got a couple selection menus in this. So I'm going to go ahead and do a select, and this is going to be my date selection. And in there, there's going to be an option. I always like to start my first option as a null with some direction for the customer. Choose the date. And there we go. And I'm just going to repeat that a few times. By the way, I'm in Notepad++. Just pressing Control D in order to repeat the uh, current line. And then I'll go ahead and put in um, today, tomorrow, and Friday.
Okay, so there's my first selection menu, and those are for my particular dates. Now, the other one was simply movie titles, so it's really kind of pretty much the same structure. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, copy that, paste it, and I'll change this over to a title. And just make sure I'm clear on this one. Let's see. Move title. Okay. And I've got... Um, Movie title is my feedback there. And then I'll go ahead and just put in my cool movie titles. Movie title one. Copy, paste, paste. Movie title two, movie title three. Okay, so it takes care of that. It's got my closing select tag. Um, okay, things are going on right there. And I need a text box. So a person can enter in their, um, oops, I already got type equals text. So a person can enter in their uh, zip code, okay? And I'll just call it name equals zip. And I'll put a little placeholder in here. Okay, and we need one more thing here. Input type equals submit, class equals button, value equals go. And that is my search form. Okay? So my search form, actually, I'm sorry, not my search form, it's my movies times form. It'll give me a selection menu for the date, selection menu for the title text box to enter the zip code, and a submit button that reads go. And if I go to my messy looking example, well, let me size this so you can see it a little better. There we go. So there's my search box it's down here at the bottom. My little search box for the date or select box for the date, select box for the title, text box for that, and a little submit button. So got the parts on there, just looking a little messy, but that's okay. Um, the last thing in this left column is my advertisement. Okay, so I'm gonna go and plug that one in. Oh, let me ID equals uh, call it add one. Closing div. Now within this, we're gonna have a generic advertisement. And I gave you an advertisement called advertisement.jpg. There we go. I like to put that on the same line. All right, so now I've got those three elements. All right, we're just flying along here. So last but not least, in fact, not really last either. Um, don't forget, this is the closing div for my left column. Now I get to my main column, and my main column has some pretty important elements. Go back to the finished example here. The main column has my navigation menu, has really the title of the page, or in this case, the movie in particular. It's going to contain a uh, embedded video and some text describing that video or trailer or movie, whatever it happens to be. So we've got navigation, headline, um, video, and then some a paragraph of text. Okay, so we'll take care of that next. Okay, so I jump back over to my editor. I go to my main column give myself plenty of room to work. A lot of stuff in the main column. And I'll go ahead and start up here. So, div id equals nav menu. Go ahead and do a closing div for that. My navigation menu is going to be made up of an unordered list. So I'll go ahead and create the unordered list. List item, href, and I'm just going to do some dummy links. And I actually had some text in there, so I'll go ahead and put in the uh, text I used. So basically, I'm just kind of going off this example. Movies, TV, news, video, discussion, okay? So there's one list item, I'm happy with that. So let me just copy. Movies, TV, news, videos, discussion, okay? Close off that unordered list. 
course, making a navigation menu like this is really fast when you're working on the HTML. Obviously, a little bit more effort's going to be required on the CSS portion of it, but we'll get to that soon. But that's the navigation menu that's in my main column. What else do I have in my main column? I've got the title of the movie. Uh, big title of current movie. Okay, This is the movie that's, that's on the review page or something like that. So I've got that. And then we've got to have a place in for the movie trailer. So I'm going to create a little div for that. And for the div, I'm sorry, for the video, we're going to be using the HTML5 video tags. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a video and a few things that I required in the directions. I wanted it to have player controls, certainly normal. So I'm going to go ahead and put the controls in there. And I do tell you the width in there also. So I have the directions open on my other screen. Let me just scroll down to that real quick. Actually, doesn't look like it did have the dimensions in there. So um, I'm just going to pick some small ones. I'll just do a width equals 350 because I do tell you the whole page is going to be 900 pixels, so I don't want it to be that big. So I'll just do like width 350, height, uh, I'll do 225. There we go. It seems good enough. And I do tell you I want to use a poster, and I have a poster um, file available video thumb. Dot jpg so that'll represent the still photo of the video before somebody chooses to play it okay so there's my opening video tag I'll do a closing video tag and in between here I'm gonna have my two sources and I gave you the video files in question oops wrong thing to show you so let's see I gave you a um, of course these are a little different than the actual exam I gave you a Twilight movie trailer in the real exam but I do have an HTML basics web M file and an HTML basics mp4 file so that's what I'm going to use here in this particular demo using the source attribute I'm sorry source tag with source attribute HTML basics dot mp4 HTML basics dot um, web M depending on the browser that we're going to be using so I've got both of these video formats in there and that takes care of the trailer portion now for the big paragraph of text I said you can use any text you want doesn't matter but I did want you to put in a hyperlink somewhere in there so that way when you did your print version everything would be testable and that kind of thing so let me go ahead and create a um, I'll just take some generic text this is in a paragraph so I'm just gonna do a little copy paste there we go I got a whole bunch of text in there a bunch of lorem ipsum text and because I don't like word wrap and I don't like it to scroll off I'm just gonna go through and press hard returns throughout my paragraph there we go so there's my paragraph of generic text and I do have a generic hyperlink within my generic text everything is generic and that is the end of the content for my page that's the end of the main column there's the closing diff for that main column there's the closing diff for the main container so really the only thing left now is to get this page looking good at the moment is looking pretty uh, linear okay everything is top to bottom but all the content is in there so now it's just a matter of going to the style sheets and making what I have look like what I want we'll pick this up in the next video